Hey guys, so this is, I don't, I lost track of how many videos I've been making, but um, this is another part of my Save by Sugar startup question and answer series. And next question is, um, I can't, I can't work out for the next four weeks due to surgery. Do I stick with high calories? Am I going to lose pro the progress I've made? Um, I'm answering this really late, so it's probably already been like four weeks, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry you've been uh, through surgery. Um, I believe that if you are just like laying in bed, you'll want less calories. Like you won't be as hungry because you won't be active. So I really would just say listen to your appetite, and if you want to eat. You should eat, you know, like if you're actually saying you should eat, you should. Um, the body needs energy to like restore it, recuperate. So, you know, don't skimp on anything. But you know, you don't need to be eating maybe the volume you have been <laughs> don't need to be eating the volume you have been if you've been working out. Um will you lose your progress? Um, it's only four weeks. I don't I don't believe so. Maybe just a little bit. Um it's just kind of like, you know, if you work out um, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking more of a fitness perspective, though, on that question. Um, if you mean progress is in weight loss, it, it shouldn't mean that you would have to lose progress on weight loss uh, because you uh, had to go through a surgery. Um, surgeries are tough, and it's tough making like not being able to be active, and you have to lay in bed, and you have to be careful, and you can't pick up this, you can't do this. That's tough. Um, so be easy on yourself, and um, don't don't feel like you need to continue like losing weight or continue just like give yourself a break and um focus on recovering so then you can be at a really good stage in the you know after these four weeks um let's see what if you made a mistake and had some dairy slash meat or went way overboard on fat or sodium what would you what would be the best thing to do after to help yourself get back on track I never get upset if I go overboard with fat or sodium. Like, I don't care. Nothing had to die in the meantime. You know, that's not a problem for me. Um, I just shake it off. I don't care. Like, Taylor Swift would say, shake it off. Shake it off. Uh, <laughs> but I've had I've had mistakes where I've accidentally had something with dairy in or accidentally had something with it, like an animal extract in. Yeah, it sucked, but it's I can't do anything about it. I already have it. It was not my fault. I now know to double check the ingredients or, you know, if I'm not sure, to ask about it. Um, it's just a learning process, and you need to take it as a learning process and not a personal thing. Um, it sucks. I feel very uncomfortable. If someone tricked me into it, oh, oh, I'd be pissed. Um, but if it was just my fault just not realizing something, um, not being as diligent as I should have been, you know, it's, it's a learning process. Shame on me and let's, let's try to keep being better. You know, um, if you eat it because you consciously know you're eating it and you want to do it anyway, and, but you know, you're going to feel bad, then that's just, you know, a sign that you're still in the beginning stages of being vegan. Um, it's nothing to be ashamed of. And I, I know that I did in the past. Um, I remember having like goldfish or I remember having like a English candy bar like I mean this is like very very in the beginning of my vegan journey and I consciously was like well I just love this so much just this one candy bar is not going to you know derail my whole progress and it didn't derail my whole progress but afterwards I started thinking did I really want to do that or was that just you know what I was programmed into doing my whole life and you know it's it was a sentimental value in it. Um, just take those opportunities to like look into your mindset and really what drove you to do that. Um, again, it's it's a journey. You know, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to go off the path a little bit. Um, everyone has their own little food journey, and it's nothing to be ashamed of as long as you want to be your best and want to try your best. It's all about your intention um, and and how you apply that into your life. Um, could you talk a bit more about calories in, calories out on the high carb, low fat, vegan lifestyle? Um, it would be very helpful. Thanks. I made a lot of videos about this. Um, a lot of them are in the uh, video playlist on my YouTube about like what weight gain on a high carb, vegan lifestyle, I think is the name of the playlist. There's a lot on there. Um, what people don't think about with the calories and calories out is your bodily functions on like 
surviving. And yeah, like the basal metabolic rate, whatever. But I mean, some people burn just more than others. And it's not because of like age or male or female or weight. It's also just what the type of food you're eating. And they have proven that a calorie is not just a calorie. If you're getting a calorie from soda as opposed to a smoothie, it's going to digest differently in your body. So if you're eating or you're drinking soda, it's calorie, calorie, sugar, calories, calorie, carb is carb, right? So no, because that just spikes your insulin levels. It's very, very bad for you. On the other hand, if you're having a fruit smoothie, you have that fiber in there. You have that water content in there. It actually helps your body to not release tons of insulin. And um, recently from Dr. Greger, I've seen some studies where berries um, just being incorporated even into unhealthy things have helped lower the insulin spikes and the blood sugar spikes in the blood after eating these foods. So like say you're having pancakes. And so they did a test where like they had pancakes. And then they had a test where they had pancakes with blueberries. The blueberries actually helped like stunt that blood sugar level spike. So it's all about getting in that whole plant-based fiber. Um, so if you're having, you know, pancakes, have blueberries with them. Add in fruit when you're having things that you may be feel a little guilty about because it actually really helps um, with the blood sugar levels and keeping them steady because you don't want your blood sugar levels to spike and drop and spike and drop your whole life because that is what causes diabetes. And blood sugar levels like that are caused by diabetes because of this man-made processed sugar and tons of fat in the diet. I'm sorry, but you do not see fat people gorging on sugar. I mean, gorging on fruit. Fruit is not addictive. However, candy bars, fatty, sugary foods are addictive. And that's the issue. Um, cola is addictive. It's pure sugar. Like, yeah, if you drink pure sugar water with, like, chemicals, yeah, that's unhealthy. We're... You know, but if you're drinking a coconut smooth or a smoothie with coconut sugar and you have tons of fruit in there as well, that's a whole different story, you know. But anyway, um, enough of that rant. Actually, that's the end of the questions. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. Um, who uh, left? I asked people to leave questions on the Save by Sugar startup group, and um, some of them were very long. I'm sorry I didn't get to your questions. I did my best. Um, I hope I answered a lot of the questions, though, and helped clear up a lot of things and helped you guys out as well. Um, I'm really happy to, you know, be here on YouTube. I really can't thank you guys enough. I've really noticed, like, how much I love being here with you guys and how grateful I am to have all you guys here, like, in my life. Like, I really appreciate it. And um, I'll see you guys later for another video. Bye.